greetings uh, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, this um, morning I would like to speak about this subject which says why is it that we end up being possessed by the same spirit from which we were delivered from or having the same kind of sickness from which the Lord healed us from. In other words, when God has done a particular miracle in your life, could be healing, deliverance, why is it that at times people end up um, being either oppressed by the same spirit from which they were delivered from or end up being sick again from that kind of sickness which the Lord healed them from. Now perhaps before I dwell much on the reasons I would like to first start by the causes of sicknesses or diseases or any kind of disability as we'll see uh, in the scripture as we, we go on with this subject. First of all, let us go to Deuteronomy chapter number 28 and I would like us to read verse 15 uh, and verse number 20 to 22. Now, in verse number 15, the word of God reads that. But if you ignore the Lord your God and are not careful to keep all his commandments and statutes I am giving you today, then all these cases will come upon you in full force. Now, from verse number 16 to 19, these uh, cases are named, but I'm interested in those that are from verses number 20 to verse number 21 because they talk about what uh, I want to address. Now, in verse number 20, now the word of the Lord says, The Lord will send on you a curse confusing you and opposing you in everything you undertake until you are destroyed and quickly perish because of the evil of your deeds. In that you have forsaken me. The Lord will plague you with deadly diseases until he has completely removed you from the land you are about to possess. And he will afflict you with weakness, fever, inflammation, infection, sweat, blight, mildew, this will attack you until you perish. Now, where we are reading, God is speaking to the children of Israel and telling them that if they disobey him, if they decide not to live according to his commands, if they, divide, they decide to deviate from the will of the Lord, the Lord is saying that he is going to send confusion to them. He is going to oppose whatsoever they will do. And moreover, he will send deadly diseases to them. He will make them to be weak in their bodies. In other words, he will make them to be sick. He will cause them to be infected with certain kinds of infections if they disobey him. In other words, we see from this uh, scripture that although it is not always, but at times sicknesses are caused by us deviating from the word of the Lord. Now, it's important to also understand that um, at times sicknesses may be caused by demons or the devil. But bear in mind that the devil cannot touch you 
unless God has permitted him to touch you. For instance, in the book of Job, we find the devil saying to God, Job chapter number 1 and uh, chapter number 2, we find the devil saying to God that when, when God asked the devil that uh, has he seen um, Job, there is none like him, there is none upright like him, there is none righteous like him, the devil said in Job chapter number 1 verses number uh, 9 and 10, Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Has not thou made an hedge about him? In other words, have you not protected him? In other words, the devil was bringing a, a case to God saying, By the way, it's not that Job uh, loves you, but Job's love for you and his obedience it's because of your protection in his life. The word of the Lord says, this, um, Have you not made a hedge around him and his household and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his livestock have increased in the land. In other words, the devil is saying, God, I cannot touch Job. Because we have protected him, we have made a hedge around him and his household and all that he has on every side. In other words, you have protected Job himself, his life. We have protected his household. His household include his wife, his children. You have protected them. Not only that, everything that he has, you have protected him. In other words, the devil is saying... I cannot touch Job because we have protected him. Now, let's continue. We see from this scripture then that there is no way that the devil can attack you unless God has allowed him. Or there is sin that we have committed. As the word of the Lord says that if you transgress or if you deviate, or if you disobey God, the Lord will cause sicknesses. The Lord will cause you to be weak. The Lord will cause you to be infected by certain infections, which means therefore that these are the causes of sicknesses in our life. Now, let's go to the book of John. Uh, we're going to find the another cause for sicknesses. In fact, in John chapter number 5, the, we find a man who was a paralytic at the pool of Bethsaida. Now, this is a man that uh, Jesus healed. From that pool. It's the man that he found there in the pool having been there for quite a long time. And in verse number 14, this is what Jesus said to this man. Let's read John 5 verse number 14. After this, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, Look, you have become well. Don't sin anymore, lest anything worse happen to you. You understand? Now that you are well, now that you have been healed, Jesus says, you must not sin. Or, if you sin, something worse is going to happen to you. In other words, we see a link between being paralytic and sin. We see that Jesus is saying here that something worse than what you have been may happen to you as a result of sin. In other words, if you sin, if you, if, if you are not going to sin, there is nothing that will happen to you. 
this is what this scripture is saying if you are a child of god if you sin not there is nothing that will happen to you in terms of what happened to this man in other words this man may experience something that is worse than being paralytic being paralyzed if he sins you understand so this is also telling us then that sickness oppression by any kind again comes as a result of sin although not all kinds of sickness are caused by sin we are going to see this one briefly but from these scriptures that we have read we have seen that uh, sicknesses are caused by either disobedience from God's word here in John chapter number 5 we see that they are caused by they may be caused by sin again if you've seen something worse than what you have been healed from is going to happen that is what the word of God says uh, let's go to John chapter number 5 verse number 1 uh, to 3 John chapter number 9, verse number 1 to 3. Now, as he was passing by, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. His disciple asked him, Rabbi, who committed the sin that caused him to be born blind, this man or his parents? Now, you must understand that the disciples of Jesus were familiar with the Old Testament. In other words, they understood the principle or the link between sin and sickness or diseases. That is why they asked Jesus that, Jesus, since this man was born blind from his birth, is it because of a sin that he committed or a sin his parent committed? Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but he was born blind so that the acts of God may be revealed through what happens to him. In other words, Jesus said, at times people go through sickness or may experience certain deformities in their lives or disability depending on what way you, you name it. They may be born in certain ways with certain deformities or disabilities, not because they have sinned or they committed, their parents committed a certain kind of sins, but because God has decided that through this way in which this person is born, God's power will be revealed when this person is delivered from that kind of sickness. In other words, we have seen that the first uh, reason for sickness or deformity or disability could be seen, as the word of God tells us. In Deuteronomy, we have seen that if uh, you disobey God, God will plague you will cause certain sicknesses, diseases, weakness to happen in your life. John 5, Jesus said to the man, if you sin, something worse will happen to you. In other words, if you do not sin, you are not going to go through the same kind of experience that you have went through. Here, Jesus is saying, oh, at times people go through such kinds of experiences, not because they have sinned, but because God has decided that through these people being delivered, they, he shall receive glory. You understand? So, uh, the other part that I want us to see, uh, in Job, again, chapter number 2, after God had permitted 
uh, Satan to destroy everything that Job owned. Job remained faithful to God. Now, uh, in, 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 in verse number 3, let's find God again speaking to the devil. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God, and should evil? Still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without a cause. Verse number 4. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thy now hand, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will cast thee to thy face. And the Lord, that is verse number 6, And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. In other words, the Lord allowed the devil to attack Job healthy. That is why from verse number uh, 7 to 8, you will find that uh, Job had boils in his body. Everywhere he had boils. Now, the sickness that Job underwent here was as a result of an attack from the devil, which was allowed by God to happen. So we need also to see then that, oh, if it's the devil attacking us, it means that God has permitted him to attack us. Now, uh, we have established that sicknesses or diseases or deformities may be caused by number one sin number two uh, may be caused by uh, god's sovereignty god deciding that uh, this is what i want to happen and through this situation i am going to gain glory or it may be caused by the devil and again if it's the devil God would have permitted him to attack you. Which means therefore that without God's permission, the devil may not touch you. Now, I want us to look at things that stands on our way of receiving healing or deliverance from God. But before we do that, uh, there is a question that I would like to pose to you. Does God always heal or deliver us when we are sick? Now, as we are looking at things that stands on our way of receiving healing or deliverance from God, let that question ring on your mind because we are going to answer it very soon. Number one, the first thing that uh, may stand on your way of receiving healing or deliverance from God is God himself. Okay. Maybe someone now is getting uh, shocked. How can God stand on our way of receiving healing? Let's read uh, Second uh, Corinthians chapter number 12 and read from verse number 7. Uh, to verse number 9. Even because of this extraordinary character of the revelations, therefore, so that I would not become arrogant, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to trouble me, so that I would not become arrogant. Verse number 8. I asked the Lord three times about this, that it will depart from me. And he said, that is verse number 9, My grace is sufficient for you. That is what God said. Now, 
uh, Apostle Paul had this particular thorn in his flesh. And here the word of God tells us that he asked the Lord three times. Now this thorn that he had in the flesh could be a kind of sickness or I do not know. But there is something that he had in his flesh that was uh, not a nice thing to have. That is why the word of God says that uh, it was a thorn in the flesh. Now, uh, which means it was a painful thing that he had in his flesh. Now, we are not told what kind of a thorn was it exactly. But we are told that Apostle Paul begged the Lord that uh, this particular thorn may be removed in his flesh. In other words, it may be delivered. It says that it may depart from him. That is what he asked from God. Hear what God said. Verse number 9. God said, My grace is sufficient for thee. In other words, God said, No, I am not going to heal you or cause this thing to depart from me. Understand that Apostle Paul prayed for this stone to be removed from him three times. Pray. God, please remove this particular throne, throne in my flesh. God said, no, my grace is sufficient for you. You understand? Which means, therefore, God doesn't always heal or deliver us when we are sick in our bodies. From this scripture, we can see that God doesn't always deliver us when we are sick in our bodies. In other words, God's sovereign and will at times stands in our way of receiving healing or being delivered. This is why Apostle Paul was not healed. It was not because of any sin that he has committed, but we are told that God said, No, I am not going to do this. You understand? And apparently, here Apostle Paul gives us reason as, as in why was this stone put in his flesh? He says that so that he may not become uh, too proud. You understand? So that he may not be exalted above measure. Therefore, he was given this particular thorn so that he may remain humbled. That, oh, even though I've seen these kinds of revelations, uh, so much things have went as far as the third heaven. I've gone through or seen a lot of miracles in my life. But still, there are certain things that I cannot do because God has limited my ability. I cannot detect what God uh, must do. In other words, I am subject to his will. This is one of the things that we find here. Now, let's go to point number two and see the second thing that again stands uh, in our way of receiving healing from the Lord. Now, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter number 59. And we are going to read the first three verses there. This is how it reads. Isaiah 59 verse number 1 uh, to 3. Look, the Lord's hand is not too weak to deliver you. His ear is not too deep to hear you. But your sinful acts have alienated you from your God. Your sins have caused him to reject you and not to listen to your prayers. For your hands are stained with blood and your fingers with sin. Your lips speak lies. Your tongue ushers malicious words. What is it that we find here? We find that, oh, by the way, God's hand is not weak to deliver or heal. 
and his ear is not deaf that it cannot hear you or us when we pray but our sinful acts have alienated us from God. In other words, they have separated us from God. Your sins have caused him to reject you and not to listen to your prayers. In other words, you are busy praying for healing or for deliverance. But because of certain sins, God rejects your prayer. God does not listen to your prayer. In other words, for God to hear your prayer, to listen to it, you must remove any kind of sin that may alienate you from the Lord. You understand? So in other words, we are seeing here the second thing that stands in our way of healing or receiving deliverance from the Lord. It's sin. The first one was God, was God's sovereignty. That is God's will, something that we cannot uh, influence in any way. If God decides that uh, today I am going to do this and um, there is nothing that we can do, you understand about it. That is why Apostle Paul said, I begged the Lord three times that this thorn may be removed from me it was not removed you understand let's go to the third thing uh, that stands on our way when we seek uh, god's intervention in terms of our health thing. now it's james let's go to james chapter number five and we are going to read from the verse number 16. It reads us, so confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The answer of a righteous person is great effectiveness. Now, where we are reading, we are told that there is something that we need to do. We need to confess uh, our sins so that we may be healed. You understand? That is what the word of the Lord says. Confess your sins. Let me read uh, from my King James Version. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed you see the first step is confessing your faults one to another in other words if you have wronged somebody this is where the issue of confessing one to another comes into not that uh, you just confess uh, your sins to people no but if for instance, you have wronged somebody. You say to him, my brother, I've wronged you here and I am sorry. Please forgive me. This is what the word of God says here. Confess your faults one to another. This is my fault. As far as you are concerned, I've wronged you. Therefore, I am sorry. This is what the word of God said. In other words, if you do not do the first part of confessing your faults one to another, if when we have wronged somebody, you must forget about receiving healing from God because you are told him, confess your faults and then pray for one another so that you may be healed. You understand? Now, the healing here, uh, it's, 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 it's twofold, but... I like the fact that in verse number 14, the word of God spoke about sickness. If anyone amongst you is sick. Therefore, the healing in this context primarily is the one of our bodies. Of healthiness. You understand that? Whereby you have to confess your sins. So if you do not confess your sin, therefore you cannot receive healing from God. 
In other words, if there is any sin between you and your fellow believers that you are not confessing, it may stand in your way of receiving healing from the Lord. Apart from having a sins a, from one to the other, you may also have committed sin unto the Lord. Maybe it's a sin of omission, you are supposed to do something, you didn't do it. For God to hear you and accept your prayer so that you can be healed, you must confess that sin. Now, we have seen these things as the causes. Now, Jesus said to, 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 to that man that he healed that uh, in John 5, verse number 14, that uh, he must not sin again. Or else a worse thing is going to happen to him. Something worse is going to come to his life. Now, after you have received healing, for you to remain healed, it's important that you remain obedient to God. Because if you don't, something worse is going to happen to you. It can either be the same sickness coming to you, or taking your life. Let's look at the word of God uh, to, to, to see what uh, Jesus said about such things. Matthew chapter number 12, verse number 43 uh, to 45. This is what is Jesus said. When an unclean spirit goes out of a person, it passes through water places looking for rest but does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the home I left. When it returns, it finds the house empty, swept clean, and put in order. Then it goes and brings with it seven other spirits, more evil than itself. And they go in and leave there. So the last state of that person is worse than the first. It will be the way of this evil generation as well. In other words, we see that when we are healed or delivered from certain spirits or certain sickness, we become a clean since now there is no more a defiled spirit that lives in our bodies. We become clean. However, the spirit that has been cast out uh, from us will go wandering looking for a place to stay. And if it doesn't find any place, it will come back to check its old house. And if it finds that well, the house is still there and open, vacant. In other words, there is nothing that is vacant. Um, I mean, there is nothing that has occupied the place. In other words, we have been delivered. But now we have opened uh, the place uh, for the devil through committing sin. The devil is going to go and invite other spirits so that it can come now and your state will become worse. In other words... Your state of deliverance will be short-lived if there is a way in which the evil spirits may repossess you, may re-enter your life again. You understand? For that not to happen, you need to remain faithful, obedient to God. We have seen Jesus saying to that man in John 5, Verse 14 that, go and sin no more, or else something worse will happen to you. Now, for something not to happen to you, you must not sin. In other words, if you sin, something worse will happen to you. How do we avoid that from happening? You must not sin. You must keep yourself uh, pure before the Lord, you must do his word. Then there is no way that evil spirits may possess your life again. 
if you remain faithful unto the Lord. Now, sins uh, are different. You may find that at times you are just having um, a, a sin of unforgiveness in your life. That is a door for the devil to attack you, to enter your life again. That is why at times that you will find that people have been delivered, but uh, one, two, three, few months down the line, they are back again to their old state. And then some people may say, hey, this thing of deliverance doesn't work. It works, but at times, we are the reasons why we do not remain healed forever. Because Jesus said, go and sin no more. And in most cases, when Jesus healed or delivered people, he will tell them, go and sin no more. That will be the instruction. Go and sin no more. You understand? Now, in conclusion, this is what I would like to say. Whenever we are praying for people, we must have faith that uh, God will heal them. If it's in accordance to his will, he is going to deliver them. That is what uh, the word of the Lord said, that uh, if we pray in accordance to God's will, we are going to have the request uh, that we have submitted uh, unto him granted. You see, therefore, we must pray with faith. Because the word of the Lord says that if we doubt, we must forget that we receive anything from the Lord. You understand? Now, in conclusion, let me say this. James 5, verse number 14. Uh, the word of the Lord says, If any sick among you, is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Now, this is what the Lord is saying. Verse number 15, And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed any sin, they shall be forgiven him. In other words, if a person is sick, he must ask the elders of the church to pray for them. And we are told that they will be healed. That is the first thing. Uh, secondly, uh, Jesus in Mark 10 in Matthew 10, I mean Matthew 10, uh, verse number 7 to 8, this is what he said when he, he sent his disciples to, uh, to go and preach. He said, verse number 7, Matthew 10, As you go, preach this message, the kingdom of God is near. Verse number 8, Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons freely you received freely give now amongst the task that jesus gave to his disciples was to heal the sick you understand so whenever we are faced with sick people or sickness we must uh, pray with the understanding that we have been commanded to heal the sick so we must believe that the Lord will heal those people. Uh, again, let's look at another scripture in, in Mark, Mark uh, chapter number 16. Uh, I want us to look at verse number 15 to 18. This is what the Lord of the Hill said. Mark 16 verse 15 uh, to 18. He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved, but the one who does not believe will be condemned. 17. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons. They will speak in new languages. Verse 18. They will pick up snakes with their hands, and whatever poison they will drink will not harm them. They will place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. Now, this is what God has said, that they that believe in him shall be followed by these signs. And one of the things that he has assured them that they will happen is that 
they will lay their hands on the sick and those sick people will be made whole otherwise they shall be healed from their sicknesses last scripture is john chapter number 14 and uh, i want us to just read verse number 12 and hear what jesus said i tell you the solemn truth the person who believes in me will perform the miraculous deeds that i am doing and will perform greater deeds than these because i am going to the father now one of the things that jesus did was to heal sick people and deliver people that were oppressed by demons from those spirits or evil spirits so he has said here that people that believed in him they will do what he did and greater things so when we pray for 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 for, for sick people we must have it in ourselves that by the way jesus has said will do what he has done you understand bearing in mind that if it is god's will to heal those people will be healed and if it is not no matter how much we can pray they will not be healed i hope that this will help us you understand because at times we find that uh, we say that people are not healed because of lack of faith uh, you know and all those things because for un of, of because of unbelief yes at times that might be true but that is not always the case at times people are not healed because the lord has decided not to heal them as to why the lord does that uh, we we do not know but we can only say it is his will you understand and we will never fully understand the reason as to why at times the lord will not heal people thank you so much i hope uh, you have been blessed by the message please share it uh, with other people as well